Greetings, Guardians. My name is Bife here. You ever see two puzzle pieces just forming in front of you and wonder where the rest of the puzzle is? Yeah, that's how I felt when reading the lore of the new exotic this season, Centrifuge. In itself, Centrifuge really isn't too remarkable. It's another arc auto rifle that follows in the footsteps of a slew of weapons introduced after the 3.0 subclasses. It utilizes core elements of the arc subclass, such as movement tech and blinding explosions and all this other good stuff. And you know what? It's fine. You know, as far as weapons go, this is pretty much in line with the kit that you'd get with Ark, and it synergizes and does all those nice things. And its lore doesn't seem so interesting at first. Until you read one name, and that is one Dr. Pell. We don't know much about Dr. Pell, except for this. Whatever she discovered was so important that apparently it led to her death at the hands of the Warmind Rasputin. Today, we're going to unwrap a mystery in progress, one that I think is only just starting to reveal itself. It leads us to some rather remarkable places, and it makes it clear that the happenings on Titan might have had consequences reaching farther than we could have imagined. This goes very deep, and leads us to some really mysterious places. And we don't have all the answers yet, but for the moment, Let's sit there and remember the name Dr. Pell, because she is our fascinating character today. So let's start with the basics. Titan fell in the collapse, we all know this. The Witness sent the Black Fleet to wipe it out using massive gravitational tidal waves. Before all of that happened though, Rasputin had detected that the Witness and the Black Fleet was approaching, and so Rasputin ordered throughout the system various evacuation or military orders including an evacuation of all of Titan's three million inhabitants. However, there were also teams of Seraphs dispatched to the Arcology. Seraphs with authority under Rasputin to discover the whereabouts of a certain Dr. Shanice Pell. The contingents of Seraphs sent by Rasputin to Titan were looking for work and data contained within Pell's lab. The nature of this data isn't excellently discussed, it's very vague, but the exchange and what we know about it is listed in the Kraken Mare law book. This is the brief excerpt from the initial investigative request. Are you threatening to shoot me? Mia stares at the Exo woman in disbelief. She hasn't seen a gun in nearly 50 years, and now they're not only coming into her habitat, but they're also pointed at her. I won't shoot you. The needles of Morgan's scalp glitter. But I will tell you that I could if I found it necessary. This is wrong, David Barks. I know you, Morgan. You believe in sacrosanct human will and the primacy of informed individual agency and the need for powerful actors to obtain consent. The person I knew would never- The person you knew might have had time for this conversation, Morgan says with vicious remove. The pronoun dance suggests shared personal history that Mia has no business asking after or caring about. I don't. Administrator, my team will now proceed to Shanice Pell's lab to secure our objective. If you're with me, maybe it gets done faster. If not, maybe it gets done messier. Your choice. Of course. Of course it's about Shanice Pell. Who else? A silent alarm throbs in Mia's sensorium like a snake coiling around her wrist. Down in the residential blocks, one of her citizens has lifted one too many boxes and manifested pre-symptoms of a heart attack. EMTs are on the way, so it probably won't be the day's first death. Probably. Life burns so easily. It's her job to stand up to those who forget that. I'll escort you to the lab, she says. May I assume that you're interested in containing some data at Pell's lab? Should I close our airspace? We're in the middle of- You'll do nothing. Morgan says, confidently, but incorrectly. I'm killing all your satellite uplinks, except for text and basic flight telemetry. Who ordered this? Mia demands. On what grounds can Solsec impose some high-handed protocol on my arcology? Morgan does not make the obvious correction. Not who ordered this, but what. So it's clear that Rasputin views Dr. Pell's research as a threat to the whole system at this point, given the nature of the time as the very beginning of the collapse, and the nature of the operation as it's being conducted. Armed soldiers in the Golden Age are a rarity, and that's very clear. 
Dr. Pell and whatever she's working on is something that Rasputin is trying to contain and control so that it doesn't get into enemy hands. However, this wasn't known to the members of the Arcology staff who quietly assisted Dr. Pell through an action, allowing her to escape onto a civilian evacuation shuttle. In any other normal circumstances, this might have worked, but Rasputin was operating under new moral parameters. New moral parameters that enforced extreme action, as the evacuation ship, with Dr. Pell and thousands of other colonists on board, took off. The tyrant made his move and struck. The beam kisses the rising shuttle and cuts through it, like a wire through a block of butter, as if the ship and everyone inside were as thin as the hydrocarbon sleet. Thunder booms, louder than Earth's, through heavy nitromethane air. Mia watches the debris strike the smooth black ocean and sink. She can't breathe. There is something like a whittled mulberry branch stuck in her throat. Do you realize this is your fault? Morgan too groans, inviting no dispute about whether it is, in fact, Mia van der Ven's fault. Yes, in a complicated way, but rather asking her if she accepts it. Do you see, Mia? Do you see how you killed them? It was a good plan, she'd thought. Smuggling Shanice Pell out on the evacuation ships was the right thing to do, because it put Shanice Pell's personal autonomy above the needs of any enigmatic emergency protocol. But it gave Shanice a choice about what to do with her data instead of yielding that choice to Morgan and her exos. Why? David Korosek whispers. Morgan, you murdered all those people. Why? It should have worked. Mia never betrayed herself to the Exo's electronic warfare with a telltale signal. She didn't warn Pell with a crude mechanical sign, like a blinking light or a gushing faucet, that a watching AI might detect. She hid her alarm in the social chaos of the Arcology's evacuation. Simply by failing to renew a hold order, she allowed one of her security frames to detain a Clovis Bray executive in Dome 2. The Clovis Corporate Embassy sent a team to unsnarl the situation, but that unexpected Clovis sortie triggered Shanice Pell's sentinel programs and kicked off her red alert evacuation protocol. She was already evacuating, just like everyone else. Now she believed, correctly, that someone was after her. Shanice and her lab ran before Morgan's exos could reach them. Ran with the data Morgan came to silence. The probe. This must be about the Pell deep space probe. That demonstration of self-sufficiency that caused such vicious, quiet controversy. What did it find? When Morgan 2's network sensors warned her of Pell's flight, Mia thought she'd won. Saved the radically self-sufficient scientist from the big bad war mind and its paranoid goons. But Morgan 2 had just covered her glowing eyes. Administrator... Didn't you understand that I was the humane option? Didn't you think? And down from the sky, swift and stealthily as the warsats that fired it, came the invisible discharge of an X-ray laser to light the shuttle's propellant like a lantern. The beam path was hot white, straight as poured silver, collapsing instantly. A crash of pure toned thunder as the tunnel of burnt air closes in on itself and the shuttle opening like a ghastly blossom, the shape of the thing going upward very quickly, no longer in one piece. Oh, no, Mia had gasped, not understanding at first. Was it an accident? Had the phantom disaster finally arrived on Titan and struck its first blow? This was the age of life, and governments did not ever use force against human beings. There were always alternatives. Every soul sacred, every evil treatable. Then she understood what the war mind had done. So here we have a rather interesting and important piece of information that needs to be unpacked. Dr. Shanice Pell was working on a deep space probe, something that acted as a demonstration of self-sufficiency, a probe that might have found something. Whatever Shanice Pell was working on, Rasputin viewed the existence of data potentially related to it 
as so harmful that it would pose a threat to the entire system and the survival of humanity. With that in mind, and knowing that Rasputin saw it as necessary to execute an entire colony ship worth of people, we need to remember that this data must be serious. So, with that in mind, let's read Centrifuge's lore tab where Dr. Pell is also mentioned and see if we can learn any more. Breakthrough or Broken? Excerpts from a pre-collapse report logged by Dr. Katoon Rowe, a researcher in the engineering division of the New Pacific Arcology, Titan. Since Dr. Pell's breakthrough on methods of magnetic containment last year, we've successfully stabilized multiple ionic reactors. They have allowed us to expand our division's plasma technology work beyond research into development. Because the Arcology's turbines have been generating more energy than the facility consumes, leadership has decided, over the objections of D.M. Korosek, to focus initial trials on force-multiplying technology. Ostensibly, leadership's hope is to supplement invasive and costly gene-splicing technology with power suits that could greatly extend our divers' uptime. While the power suit initiative seems benign, Arcology leadership's insistence on controlled ionic emissions research is clearly geared towards weapon development. Though I will, of course, give my full focus to our new directive, I pray these weapons remain prototypes, discarded and forgotten, in the back room of history. So, for the most part, there's not much really there that's mentioned. I should say that the DM Korosek is the David from the last two entries worth of lore, the David who was arguing with the Exo Morgan, the Seraph who was sent by Rasputin. For a little background, the short version is that David is a famous ethicist, and was sent along to Titan should new species be encountered when the scientists on Titan drilled through the ice cap into the water ocean beneath Titan's methane ocean. He never got the chance to say hello to anything, and to allow moral frameworks to exist in such a vacuum. The weird little bit of information that we get is gleaned from the very beginning. The breakthrough that Dr. Pell had was supposedly to do with magnetic containment. We have practically nothing on the face of that that sounds remotely connected. I mean, magnetic containment, plasma technology. I mean, maybe something to do with electromagnetic fields? It's a bit of a reach. And why was that technology and that data so important? I mean, why would Rasputin think that that threatens all of humanity? Is there something else that magnetic containment might have to do with? I wonder, what was it that was said again by Choima Essie? Choima Essie, research log, The Veil. I don't even know where to start. When we landed on Neptune, there was something waiting for us. An, an alien structure. It's an electromagnetic anomaly. No mass, but a tangible surface area. It's like a thesis statement to the von Neumann-Wigner hypothesis. It's definitely paracausal, like the Traveler. Maya calls it the Veil. She says she heard the name in a whisper when... when she looked at it. When I asked her who whispered, she said it was... her own voice. I still haven't had time to process that. Everyone on the initial survey team died. The minute they touched the object, they entered a state of... of brain death. All of them. To make it worse, the EM radiation emitting from the veil is causing psychological distress in the exos that came with us. They've all described moments of intense hallucinogenic reverie. Some of them went silent and rigid and just... Stopped. Maya called it billboarding. Something from the early days of Clovis Bray's ExoMind project. She doesn't seem afraid or surprised. She's convinced this thing, in her own words, she says, it'll be our salvation. Fascinating. This corroborates what Nezarek said that the Veil survived Sabathun's escapade. This must have been the root of Sabathun's betrayal. 
stalling the witness's plan to buy time to counter it. So, she stole the veil from Nezarek? And killed him in doing so. It explains what happened to the Lunar Pyramid. Why it's dormant. Then what about the rest of this? What happened to the Exos? Is... is that what happened to all of them? I have some theories, but it, it's too early. Regardless, it sounds like the Veil had an ill effect on Dr. Sanderesh. We must be cautious. Hopefully the next log we decrypt will shed more light on this enigma. Ah, so there's a potential connection. I don't know if that is actually where all of this leads. It's the thing that came to mind immediately for me. But then again, all things are Veil flavoured and next week we'll probably be getting into what the Veil really is and all the other bits and pieces about it. What I would say for the moment is that that last bit is very much conjecture. It's also worth remembering that Rasputin did know about the Veil because the Veil was in the Nefele Stronghold files. Therefore, Rasputin probably knew about everything to do with the Veil's incredible importance and that it was linked to the Traveler. He might have seen that and realized that, yeah, this is actually something worth containing just in case the enemy gets hold of it. That's a bit of a reach, especially considering that it combines two things, the deep space probe and the electromagnetic containment that it came along with, and then throws it all at the potential idea of the Veil, so who knows? All speculative for the moment, but I wouldn't discard the link so quickly. One last thing that I think is worth noting as well is that Dr. Shanice Pell is not the only Pell within Destiny's Law. Dr. Shanice Pell might have been on Titan, but there was also a David Pell who was working on the K1 project. Potentially, there's a familial connection there. Take a listen to what we learn of David Pell within the Revelation Law book in the entry Waking Dreams. Because you know what? The K1 project, it's worth remembering. It's very important to a lot of the lore of the darkness of Destiny, and if this is a related Pell to the same Dr. Shanice Pell, it's probably worth keeping in mind that they probably talked to each other. Record 7932L745, Luna 1230. Recusal Mirror Record. Identities David Pell. Dr. Luli Henson, Commander Kuang Xuan. Location, K1 Dig Site 1, Crew Quarters, Commander's Quarters. Threat Detect, Level 4, 5, 9, 10. Psychosis, Dangerous, Possible Exotic, Crew Impairment, Protocol in Compliance. Revised Detect, Level 3, 4, 6, 10, Confirmed Exotic. Psychosis, Dangerous, Crew Impairment. Protocol in compliance. Threat response. Audit exotic influence. Mirror files. Recusal review. Threat review. Revised response. Exhibit record 755. File. Report to Rasputin. No, I have to talk to her. I'm sorry, Commander. Too much time with the transceiver. David just needs some rest. I do not. He and I were just talking about that. You mean you were trying to stick a needle in me? David, stop. No, don't touch me. She doesn't get it, Commander. She doesn't understand. She doesn't listen to it like I do. She doesn't know how helpful it can be. It's all right, Henson. Let David talk. See, no one's going to make you do anything you don't want to. She's trying to make me sleep, but I don't sleep anymore. I dream when I'm awake now. Me too. Sometimes. It's okay. It's better than okay. It's brilliant. I'm brilliant. Look at what it helped me make. Firewall. Show them the drive designs. AICOM firewall hologram. Offered. A minute and seven seconds of silence. See? You see what I mean? Huh. The principle scales. I applied it to matter. It could work for whatever we want. It builds a cosmophasic field around the object to generate a convergence point. I can't build it with the materials we have here. Plus, you don't want to be in the solar system when you engage the drive. Wouldn't want to accidentally bring anything along with you. <sighs> okay, David, you've had your chat. Doctor, I think David is right. Excuse me? You don't understand. You may go. David and I have a lot to talk about. 
One wonders what David means when he says, the principle scales and it could work for whatever we want, and that whatever we did we didn't want to activate the drive in the solar system lest we bring things with us. It sounds almost as though he's talking about teleportation, but it's really not clear. Maybe this is actually faster than light travel as opposed to the near light speed travel that we've developed by this point of technology. There's also a few different ideas and meanings of a convergence point, so it's not totally clear. Someone who's better at science will probably be able to give you a better idea down below in the comments section, so please do let me know. Understanding the mystery of the Pells is something far beyond us for now. Whilst undoubtedly I'll be making a follow-up to this video at some point in the future, I wonder if the discovery of the deep space probe was in fact the Veil, an object of such importance that Rasputin was willing to kill for it or simply to keep its existence safe and secret. An object that might render the whole of humanity's survival invalid depending on who controlled it. An object that could perhaps be contained with the use of Dr. Pell's technology. Or perhaps the veil was the discovery that prompted Dr. Pell to pursue that research in the field. Either way, for now, when you hold centrifuge, remember that you hold something with some potentially really powerful echoes. Centrifuge is the remnant of a scientist whose data led to the death of thousands, herself included. For that reason alone, wield it with respect. And should it come linked to anything more sinister in the system, remember that too. Centrifuge is the remnant of a technology that might well have encased gods. And if the name Dr. Pell comes up again in this season or future ones, I'll make sure to make a follow-up video so we can confirm what's going on there. For the moment, a new mystery is afoot, one that hopefully we'll be able to unravel some more. If I've missed anything on this, by the way, go ahead and let me know in the comments section. I'd be fascinated to know if there is something that I'm not getting here. Because you know what? Yeah, it's entirely possible that I missed something. The only reason that I even included the bit from the Revelation lore book is because I was talking about it with Rhino. And yeah, their stuff is very much also in the know, but you know, they brought something to my attention that I wasn't aware of before. So if I've missed something, let me know down below. If you enjoyed the video, go ahead and leave a like. And of course, if you want more Destiny content, go ahead and hit subscribe and the bell next to subscribe to turn on those email notifications. But as per usual, know that your viewership, as always, is quite enough for me. And that in the meantime, my name has been My Name is Bife. Rodasia Arastra. I'll see you, Starside.